Welcome to Our Town, a 30-minute podcast brought to you by Best Bark Communications, a small but fierce client-centered marketing company powered by decades of experience and well-established business networks. This is Andy Ockershausen, and, and this is Our Town, and I'm delighted to, to uh, reintroduce to somebody that I've known since 1972 when he came to... This copy says WJLA. However, I know he came to WMAL TV, and it's an award winning producer, reporter, news anchor, the man that covered news for as many years in Washington, Paul <laughs> Berry. Paul, welcome to our town. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, what a pleasure to to be invited. I mean, there are so many no, wonderful no, legends around here. I'm not a star, I'm just a. I, I, I am what I was the first time I walked down the hallway, and you accosted me in the hallway, you know? <laughs> With Ernie uh, Fears, with probably. Ernie, yeah, and telling me, uh, welcome to, to the station. Uh, that was great. At WMAL, you're right. TV. Um, 1972, August of 1972. Paul, the, the amazing thing is that, uh, that you were somewhat of a uh, trailblazer, but Channel, you were the first black man that I recall at Channel 7 that was an anchor, although we had a co-anchor. What was his name? Fred Thomas? Fred Thomas. Fred Tom when I got there, Fred Thomas was there along with. Uh, with somebody that I, I don't Jim, remember. Jim, was it Slade? What was his yeah, name? Yeah. Something like that, an anchor guy. Yeah. yeah but he, you were a solo guy. I was. I, I knew was, that. Yeah, I was. I came in and I ended up, I tell you who I, re I replaced, I, he was irreplaceable, was the young man who uh, went on to ABC, went, uh, did the morning, what's the guy that did the morning uh, show on ABC? For, uh, John, was it John? And he ended, he ended up anchoring the news uh, for ABC for a while. But he started out with Good Morning. Not Charlie Gibson. Charlie Gibson. Oh, Charlie, yeah, was, Charlie. Charlie was on his way to Chicago to go to uh, to Northwestern for a fellowship. And and he quit. And so they had to find somebody to replace him. Cookerly, Tom Cookerly, had come into Detroit looking for another guy on Channel 4, NBC. Which, and I could have told him he was never leaving. But he saw me on the air and called me and said, would you be interested in coming to Washington. It turns out that I had just been in Washington with my grandmother the year before uh, and fell in love with the place. And I said to her, you know, we came together and she'd never been to Washington, nor had I. I said, I'm going to work here. And Is that behold, when you had the roles? No, the no, I had, I, I, no, no, that was, I you had, didn't come in. No, I came in with, I had, a, I, I had a XKE, a red Jaguar. That's what I was driving, <laughs> a red XKE Jaguar that I couldn't get here. Cookie I tried three been... times to bring that car here, and every time it would break down. You think I got the message <laughs> between Detroit and here? I'd somewhere on the road, it would break down, and I'd have to tow it back to Detroit. So the third time, I just towed it here. I just had them bring the car in, uh, and I sold that car to somebody that you know, at least to the daughter of. There was a bank right across the street from WMAL. What was the name? Washington Bank. Washington City Bank was it? Right I across don't know. the street. Anyway, the guy that was the exec, and you you introduced me to this guy. He was a bank. He owned the bank. And his daughter saw the XKE in the parking lot outside of uh, outside of uh, MAL because you know it was right, right across the street. And I the was old ice palace. Yeah, and I was trying to get rid of this lemon, and she was in love with the car. And I, yeah, I got a great car. A for natural you. marriage. Yeah, it was. Tom great. had only been in Washington for a year because he came in '71, and I remember him talking about you, and you made an instant hit and joined the team, and we had a lot of good people there. At that time, it was WML Radio and WML TV. Combined, I worked for both. And we and, and it was all both, and very proud. And then the commission stepped in and said, you can't own a radio and television That's right. station. Not, uh, one owner couldn't own both, and that, that was in correct. the rules, and so we had to split. And uh, I stayed with uh, television, and you came to radio at that time. I, I think, stayed with radio, yeah, right, because yeah, I worked yeah, Dick yeah. Stakes, and I had been that, working right, both Dick ends. Dick Stakes, there was a, but, there was a winner. <laughs> what I did not know, and I found out, and I'm delighted to talk about it, is that you were in Vietnam and serving your country, and you, assigned, you, you established the first radio station, FM station, yeah. in... I can't believe in South yeah, Vietnam. Yeah, we won it. It was FM Tuiwa, 105 point whatever, Tuiwa. Uh, and I knew as much about establishing a radio station. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it looks good but on your resume. What happened was the, the we had a we had a, a 50 watt Army Trans receiver that we could get out about five or 10 miles or whatever. Uh, and so uh, somebody had decided that it would be great to have radio over there because we didn't have uh, we didn't have radio capabilities in Tuiwa unless you were listening to the the armed network. Forces. Yeah, armed forces, and you couldn't always hear it up there. Okay, I'm sure. So we put we established. I went down to um, Vietnam, went down to Saigon, 
and I quote requisition uh, some <laughs> equipment that that I got from no one, none other than uh, 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 what was his name? Uh, Good morning, Good morning Vietnam. Vietnam. He was there. he was Adrian the Cronauer. yeah yeah Adrian he was there at the time. Do you, know, you know he worked at WML one I, time? I didn't know that. No, yes, he so did. he was down there, and I told him what I needed, and he took me back, and he took said, "Care of you? Yeah, give him what he needs." And I came up with two um, with a gateway board uh, and two turntables and a lot of other stuff that were all sitting in these warehouses in I think it's in, a great in, in in Saigon, and we brought him up country, and we had our engineer. And we went on the air. We were a class B facility, which meant that we had television or we had yeah, video capability. capability, but we had no radio. So, um, but we would get the packaging from from Armed Forces Vietnam Network or the American Forces Vietnam Network. So we, we went on the air, but but AFVN, you know, politics is just a, always a monster <laughs> because we weren't class A. Uh, AFVN said to us, "You can't use." the records because you're not authorized to pl to play you're not even authorized to have a station here okay uh, <laughs> you're not even authorized to be we, here. we could, yeah we could we could do television but we couldn't so the station then came under fell under the um control of the base commander who wanted it he and so he called me and we talked to him. i said yeah we'll do it so he so we were playing these records okay at the time and then i got a second order that said can't play your records. <laughs> so what do you do? So you know what we did? We wrote to every radio station in America that we could get to and asked them to send us over records, to send us over tapes. And what made us really popular, we would run the tape reel to reel of a show in New York with the commercials. with And, and the guys loved it. Even Viet, even Charlie, the Viet Cong would call us and, and, and ask for us uh, that they liked. You know, everybody's listening. So we were running pizza commercials, car commercials. We we got the tapes back and we ran them just that way. And, Paul, uh, it's a great, great story. Uh, yeah. Now, how many percent of the people didn't know about the Paul Berry? That's why we're doing our town. <laughs> Talk about things behind the scenes, Paul Berry. Yeah. And I think it's a great story. And knowing Adrian and being part of that, you know, terrible, I think a terrible time in our lives. South Korea yeah. wasn't Korea, but but we survived, and then yeah. we survived uh, Vietnam the yeah, same way. Yeah, absolutely. We got we got through it. And we got through it because the American spirit is uh, exactly you can't cannot be doused. by They've got radio know. now over in the uh, Afghanistan area. You oh know, yeah, well, Americans the, take everything with them. You know what? I would have I would have given bottle. my right leg to have a telephone that I could have picked up and called home. There was no such thing then. <laughs> You know, you, you wrote letters. It took a while. We didn't have telephones. Are you kidding? V-mail. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have anything. You just waited. That well, was all war. You, well, even, yeah. I mean, but the point, we didn't have the technology. So, you know, we you, you, the biggest day, time of the day, the most important time of the day then back in, uh, what year, 68? Six, I got there the day of Tet, when a big hole in the airport when I got to be 68, Vietnam. right? Yeah. And, and, and the most important part of the day was mail call. Because you, you'd gather around to hope that you got something from home, and sometimes you did and sometimes you didn't. But that was a contact with home, you know, and, and there was no such thing as calling That's or talking That's a Paul anybody. Berry nobody knows. We know uh, you as the big star on you, cha you, television Channel 7, but this is a, you were a GI absolutely. doing your thing for your absolutely, group. Absolutely. And it was a wonderful world. I bet yeah. your kids love the story. I yeah, they do. Uh, they Oh, they know. You know, because of my rank, I was in control of, or at least I had um, uh, authority over four places. I was at Tuiwa, Pleiku, Da Nang, and wow. Way, and all of those people worked for me. At, at those different you locations. got around. Well, they they what the problem was they didn't have anybody with rank that could control, and they didn't have people coming in. So they went they looked to the person with the the highest yeah. rank. That was me at the time. And then you went back to Detroit to back to broadcasting in Detroit. Um, no, I left when I left Vietnam. Um, I I yeah I came I got out of service. I actually came back and went to went to Texas for a while um, uh, after I left Vietnam. Uh, I was there for just under a year. Came back and went to work in in Texas uh, in broadcasting. In broadcast, yeah, because by that time I was, you know, I had the experience and I had the. I'd gone through the American Forces uh, Radio and Television School, uh, DINFOS, Department of Defense Information School, uh, which was the equivalent of like two, three years right. of college. Uh, and so I went to work for, a, uh, and I went into the community services department at Shepherd Air Force Base. Uh, and uh, there, while I was there, uh, following the Vietnam uh, experience, they wanted the, the local station. <laughs> local station didn't have a. They had. Uh, they had. They had no. Uh, there were no blacks on radio there in Texas, <laughs> in Wichita Falls, Texas. And so they gave me a fifteen-minute show. 
uh, that I was doing. I was Sweet Pea the Mad Lad. Were you still in the military? <laughs> huh? Yeah, I was. Oh, yeah, I was. Oh, so I would awesome. leave there and go down and start puking. You know, yeah, yeah. Sweet Pea, I'm so bad I make flowers die. I make candy. I, all kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> Uh, and so, and it was a popular show, so they increased me from 15 minutes to 30 minutes, from 30 minutes to a half hour, I mean, from a th- to an hour, from an hour to two hours, and then the sponsors, <laughs> you know, the sponsor there, talk about cars, one, one of them was an auto, automobile sponsorship, I mean, it was sponsor. right. and he was happy because all the GIs were listening to this radio show, and, and it was expanded, and so he calls me over and says, come here, come to the lot, and I go over to this lot, and he had this beautiful 1964 or 65 blue Cadillac Seville. Ooh. And he said, that's your car. I said, yeah, I like that car, right? So so they gave me the car as part of the payment for, even until Payola was alive and well, but you know. <laughs> uh, And I jumped into that car, and it was funny. I, I get to the base. Uh, to, I was at Shepard Air Force Base, and I'd pull up in this blue Cadillac that was from here to there, and the guards would all come out and they'd snack, because it had to be an officer, and they'd look in there, and that'd be lowly little me driving that big car, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, oh, that's a great story. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I got out of service. Uh, I came home in December of uh, 68, 69, maybe, 68. Uh, and I went down to, I, I was glad to be home uh, for a few days. And I was about to re-up. As a matter of fact, they'd given me uh, a commission. They wouldn't give me the commission to, if I stayed in. And I came home, and I went down, and I visited one of the local stations, WWJ. W, 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 uh, in Big power Oh, station. yeah, WWJ. And I went down to see if I could. And I was in uniform with my little AFVN badge on and all, very proud of that. Uh, and they wouldn't let me up because it was 4 o'clock, before, you know, and I should have known, but I wasn't thinking about that. And in walks this guy about that time. Uh, it must have been about 2 o'clock, 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And he, he comes up. He says, hey, soldier, what are you doing? And I said, uh, I said, well, first of all, sir, I'm not a soldier. I'm an airman. <laughs> and we laughed. And he's, I mean, I was just, I said, I just came down to see uh, the station. He says, he says, do you know something about broadcast? I said, yeah. He says, okay, come on, come on up with me. I'm the producer of the 11 o'clock news. And he wow. was. Wow. Yeah. So he said to the guard, it's okay. So we walk up and we go upstairs and he asked me a few questions. And this is just exactly how it happened. And he said, uh, what are you doing? He said, I said, well, he says, where are you going? I said, I'm on my way back to Texas. I'm going to re-up. He says, have you signed up yet? I said, no. He says, do you want to sign up? I said, well, you know, that's what I do. And he says, uh, "He says, yeah, but you'd like to work here in your hometown, wouldn't you? And I said, I sure would, man. He says, you got a resume with you? And uh, I said, no, I am not resume. I said, I'm just kind of hanging out. He says, okay, can you type? I said, yeah. He says, can you write? I said, yeah. He says, okay, sit there and write uh, your resume. Uh, so I sat down at the typewriter. At that time, we didn't have, you know, there was no computers, guys. This was uh, 69. Absolutely, I know. I said that he gave me a five-parter. Remember those five-parters that pull out and you'd oh, have, you God, know? Yeah. And I sat down and I typed up and put that in, I put it in form and everything. And I, it was it was great. It was great. I mean, for that, what I had to do. He says, okay, hang out. So he takes us into the news director uh, who was there. And he said, I got a guy out here that we ought to take a look at. And the news director says, well, I don't have any space. I, You know, he says, I got, uh, my staff is full. He says, you know, and his name was Williams, Jim Williams. He says, Jim, you know that. He says, but Channel 7. ABC in Detroit, WXYZ, was right in the middle of a big deal with the government. The FCC was requiring that they bring on, they have uh, minorities and women. They had no blacks on the air, no women on the air. Uh, He says, and they're looking for the right person. And he says, from what you're telling me, maybe he's the right person. So he called me and I shook his hands. His name was Dave Kelly. Remember? (laughs) You remember remember Kelly came to work here? Absolutely. Yeah, that was who it was. He was, and he was a news director in Detroit at the time. So he hadn't come here yet. He followed me here. So I went over. I got the. I took the resume and thanked Jim for what he did. Um, and I was leaving the station, heading out. And as I got to the door, he said to me, "He says, hey, Paul." I said, "He says, go there, go there." He says, "I know you're not going to go there. You're going to go back to Texas tomorrow." He says, "Go there. Leave your resume at there and see you can see so i drove with 16 miles outside of downtown detroit to southfield <laughs> michigan and of course nobody was there except the lady at the desk and, and she took my resume and very kind so i come back in to to the my home my dad was living in inkster which is about 25 miles away and i get home and dad said to me uh what'd you do and i told him i said i was i was out out at wxyz and wwj and i said i had a good time 
He says, what are you doing tomorrow? He, I said, I'm going back. I'm leaving tomorrow. He says, what did they say? Uh, he, they said to call tomorrow or they'll call me if they have an interest. I said, okay. So that was that night. Nobody called. The next day, uh, I didn't get a call. And uh, I was packing up to go. And dad comes to me and he says, did you uh, call? I said, no. He says, why don't you call them? At least call them. I, don't know. I said, they have my number if they're interested, you know. But my, it, you give them a call. He says, you know, I said, okay. So I call out to WXYZ. And I leave it down and I go to the switchboard and, she, and I said, this is Paul. Paul Berry, were you here last night? And I said, yes, I was. She said, well, we've been trying to reach you. You didn't put a telephone number down on your resume. <laughs> Never thought about that, right? Nobody asked Nobody asked me for a number, so. <laughs> so, <laughs> pardon me, I, I called. And I, there was a guy by the name of Frank Bennett. She was a news director. He says, Mr. Berry, we've been trying to reach you. I've got your resume here. He said, where are you? And I said, I'm in um, Inkster. He says, well, can you come out? And I said, I'm about to leave for Texas. He says, I wouldn't do that right now if I were you. <laughs> he says, I'd come out and see me. So I said, okay. So I hopped into the car and I t told my dad, you know, and Pops, like, I said, I'm going, okay, go out. So I go back out and in a matter of minutes, We've negotiated a contract because they were, first of all, I could speak the King's English. I wasn't angry at anybody. Right. You know, I, I had pretty decent skills from what he could see. A good background. And a good background. I was from Detroit, so he didn't have to teach me the see. He said, you're everything I want. So so we negotiated wow. $125 a week. Well, that was a, a lot more money than I was making in service. So then I thought, well, I said, as I was walking out the door, I said, you know, I said, he says, okay, $150. He says, you're 150 a week. Come back and see. Us. We, want, we want you back here on the 27th of January. And this was like the 20th of, of December. So I said, okay, I'm I'm excited. You know, I mean, here I've got a job at WXYZ in my hometown and everything. So, so I get in the car. I drive back to, to my dad's house. And I walk in. And dad said, how'd it go? And I said, uh, I said it went well. They hired me. And there was this point. He says, what do you mean they hired you? I said, they hired me to, to you know, to come to work. He, he says, you're in, the, you're in the service. You're in the Air Force. You can't go. I said, Dad, you told me to go back out there. They hired me. <laughs> what are you talking about? He says, you've got a career in the military. You've got seven or eight years. Are You you mean you just signed up and you're going to? I said, well, you told me to go back. This was the wildest <laughs> conversation I have ever had with, with my dad. And he was angry. And I said, yeah, but you, you, you know. He thought you were running out. I don't know. Who, I don't know what. And so, so we had the discussion, and I ended up. The long story short, I, I went out, got got out of service, came back, and went to work at WXYZ as a. They had what they call a black trainee program. Was no such program, but they, you know, but I was it, the first and only. <laughs> <laughs> well, your timing was impeccable. Well, you know what I wow. did. My I went on the air with my first story in April of 1969. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, shaking like a dog with persimmon seeds in them. I mean, I was so scared. Fortunately, all, again, it's all about the people you work with, guys, engineers, cameramen. They're the ones that did that first story. It. They did the story. They liked me. I liked them. And, you know, I mean, that was a difference, guys. You could, you, it's a team. And that time we had four people. You had the cameraman, the sound man, the light man, and, and the reporter. And my friend, I did that first story, and it was on the air that night in Detroit hometown, right? And everybody's going crazy. We called everybody. It was just a wonder. People are calling, oh, my God, it's Paul on television. It could never be. And, and of course, my dad, and by this time, he'd see people. He'd introduce. This is, I'm Paul Berry Sr. This is Paul Berry Jr., the, the young man on television. This is my son. <laughs> I, I was so responsible. Proud. Oh, yeah, I was responsible for this kid. But I said, Dad, you didn't want me. Yeah, no, I was just making sure you, you made the right decision. <laughs> Look, it was great fun. All of those things happened. And any one of those little things that didn't happen, I wouldn't yeah, be here today. Wouldn't a be here great, today. great show. We're talking to Paul Berry. This is our town. We learned so much more, Paul, that we've got to know about you. So we're going to take a break now. We'll be right back. Are you retired or soon will be? Is your will up to date? Don't want to leave a mess for your family to clean up. I'm attorney Mike Collins, the guy who sends you those invitations to my estate planning seminar. I'll teach you how to save taxes, avoid probate, protect your heirs from lawsuits, bankruptcy, even the divorce court. Keep your money and your family with our innovative Reservoir Trust. Watch the mail for your invitation. Tuition's free when you register online at MikeCollins.com. That's MikeCollins.com. 
You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. This is Andy Ockershausen. This is Our Town. We're having a delightful time with Paul Barry. He came to Washington in 1972, joined WMAL-TV, and he established himself as an anchor on the 5, 6, and 11 o'clock shows. I don't know how he did it, but he did so much. And he solved a lot of things with a program called Crime Solvers and then another show called Seven on Your Side. Yeah. They were Paul Berry creations. Yeah, they both were. Yep, yep. And they yeah. won Emmys and won awards. And, yeah, they did but all they of did that. good things. Like Seven on Your Side was very important. Well, both of those shows um, were about the station serving the people, not only with the with the entertainment, but with community service and needs. And that's what I was always of the belief that we should be able to make a difference in a positive difference in the lives of the people that we program to. And that's what those programs did. Seven on your side. Um, you know, we, we received somewhere between 50 and 60,000 letters a year. Uh, and we would solve. It was incredible. Yeah, Paul. we solved almost uh, 96 percent, 97 percent of those of those cases. Uh, with crime solvers, what a fight to get it on the air. I mean, the, even the Post attacked me about you know uh, <laughs> putting these. And I said, you know, this is about making a difference. People, you know, and this and this one story they had in there was well, Paul's got they've got uh, they've got uh, families uh, t uh, turning in family members. And this lady wrote in the post, well, if he's a crook, if he's a, she said, at least I know where he is. If he goes to jail, it was a great line. <laughs> Say he's a crook. I'm, I've been feeding this crook for 20 years. Exactly right. That's family standing and up now, doing the right absolutely. thing. And now the post carries it and everybody else. Can. And of course, it's, but you, you know, crime solvers were nation, as known nationwide. Yeah, we did. I started it again with the help of two police officers. Uh, not my idea, but they they came and said we want to, you know, we think that there ought to be this relationship between the police, the community, and 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 television, or at least uh, the the media. And they were right. And why wouldn't it work? And it has worked. It works everywhere. So yeah, that was fun to do as well. Well, also while you were so busy in television, you you weren't busy at uh, too busy because you did get married. I did, to Amy. I did. I remember that vividly. Yeah. And you had three wonderful children that. Uh, the lights of my life, best things I've ever produced they with were the help Washington of a born gorgeous born woman. Too, right? All three they were are born Georgetown. In our town. All three born in Georgetown. I all love three. it. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah. Georgetown. And Hospital. they're healthy and happy now, and doing they are great beautiful. Things. All three are. You know, uh, the, my daughter is working in California now as a producer. Showbiz. Yeah, for for uh, Warner Brothers, my oldest son. Uh, Tally is in Bangkok. He's a teacher at the university. He's he's a polyglot. He speaks five languages fluently, <laughs> and he's now teaching English and and Thai, uh, and he's loving it. And my youngest, Paul Hunter, oh. babe, uh, it just uh, got his certification. He is a financial advisor for uh, Vanguard Financial up in Philadelphia. So he's he's a licensed. <laughs> He's a licensed financial agent. He ain't touching my money, but I you know this kid is really good. The Barry, the Barry good. kids have made it only because uh, you know, they had a wonderful mother that's who right, I know, that's right. Mrs. Washington, D.C., and yeah. Mrs. Our Safeway Store, but that's another <laughs> subject. But we all grew up in the same neighborhood, and I used to see her with the kids all the time, uh, and that was special. Consummate mom, she, even today. In, you know. How in the world does she let you do all this work? You were working every night almost, and yet you still got involved that I know your yeah. charities were incredible. Leukemia Society, you were involved with Ford's Theater, the Avalon, the restructure there, YMCA, Natus, Maryland yeah. Public Television. Yeah. I mean, Paul Berry Day, it went on and on. Yeah, we did a few things. Well, you had to be home a lot. Well, you know, the, the at night the the, <laughs> the the real difference was is that I had space between the five and the eleven o'clock show, and I was being paid by Uncle. Uncle Joe Albritton at the time. Right. And my thought was, okay, I'll, I'll donate some of that time back to do things. And I did. Um, you know, and I, and the reason people love you if you don't charge them anything, you can do it. <laughs> it was like, come on over. And I didn't charge for Mr. that. I was, I was being right. paid. So, and, you know, and I felt that was a, a duty and a responsibility. Salary. Yeah, I was on salary. So, and plus it was, it was a great way to meet people. And I enjoyed the interaction with folks. Uh, and I enjoyed making a difference in the lives of people. Well, that that leads me to something that was special in the community called the Paul Berry Golf Tournament. Oh. That was part of Neediest Kids' fundraising right. effort. That's right. And I know what you did for Neediest Kids, and I know what you did with the golf ball. Yeah. And it was great. It was. You had them in Ireland, and you did the I Paul did. Berry Day yeah. in Ireland. Yeah. yeah, it was. We had great fun, and you were part of that. Well, uh, I loved that. I loved you were you, you were such a. You know what the 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 beauty of you is that you speak with a clear, direct 
voice. You're not afraid <laughs> to say what you think. And when people were, and all of these things are getting involved in politics and this oh. and that. And and you'd come into a meeting and stand up, and in about five minutes, you had everybody on the right path. Everybody <laughs> got it. Everybody's okay, okay. Time out. You didn't you didn't play any games, and I appreciate it. I'd love to have you uh, ha having you involved because I would not have been there for those twenty some odd years. Had not been for folks like you, you were, well, Paul, you were always the guy. You're such you know. a big part of this community, and you did so many great things. I know about the golf tournament. I know how important that was and how important it was to Neediest Kids as a fundraiser. As a matter of fact, you used to televise part of that on Channel 7. We did. Ended up with home team sports. We did. Small we did. world, it was, right? It was wonderful. We did what nobody said could be done. That is correct. And, uh, and we did it. Uh, and again, you willing to say, okay, yeah, let's make this, let's let's show this off Absolutely. to people. And we had great fun with it. And we made it, we were raising somewhere between three hundred and five hundred thousand dollars and $500,000 a year for the neediest kids. Uh, with the sponsorships that we had, that's right. Uh, our amazing average was three hundred. Yeah, it was amazing amount of money. And even today, I, I, I've been. Matter of fact, I just got an email here on my phone from the folks that are doing neediest kids. That where it's it's evolved to or migrated to. Everything they want me ball. to come back and do some work with them, and I'll do what I can. But they, you know, they, the people were so proud this year. You came to the golf tournament. Yeah, I did. I did. And then you had established, and then you moved to the Eastern Shore, and for other reasons, and. Uh, now you're back, and I think that's great, Paul. If we could Thank resurrect you. that feeling that we had with the Harden and Weaver Children's oh, Hospital tournament, that just, you but we don't have because... that voice anymore. We don't have Harden and well, Weaver. Well, and that's where I got the idea from. Uh, I played in the Harden and Weaver tournament. Oh, didn't we? Have fun? Yeah, oh. I mean it was unbelievable. And there you had, if you wanted to know how to act and how to behave, there you had Jackson and Frank. <laughs> And you didn't have to worry. They, they let you know they knew how to be involved, but not in the way. It was a wonderful thing that they taught me. And so when I did my tournament, I just I used what I had learned from them and it took it to another level with TV and some other things that we were doing. And, and you we, cared about it. And we were you successful. You worked at it. We were. We have, you know, I can go to any school in Maryland, Virginia, or D.C., in the area. Uh, and I know that we made a difference in the oh lives of kids. Gosh, some boy. kid out there who doesn't know me, doesn't need to know me, will never know me. But I put some shoes on his feet or I put glasses on his head, That's you right. know, or I got a haircut for him or a book under his arm. You know, that, that was Paul Bear. Yeah, that's that was what we, kid. And I could smile and drive on and say, okay, I had my fun, but I did my work. And, you know, we, we had great support from Booze. Uh, Booz, Allen, Booz Allen, Hamilton, Hamilton. they dropped it, but it's... Uh, Booz Allen had no business and every business of doing what they did. They That's were, right. That was a, a company. It's all about the people, you know? Ball, Bill Stasier so right. uh, 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 was just, you know, he when they, when we talked with him about picking up the, the, the charity, when ch the reason Ch Channel 7 dropped the charity was because I had left the station and it was too, I was too closely identified with it. And right. so they allowed the charity to go, which was a mistake that later Terrible they admitted. Terrible mistake. Terrible. But, but Bill Stasier didn't miss it. He saw, yeah, he says, you mean you, we can take this? Yep. And so they, they, jump, right they jump right on it and uh, kept it going for another 15 years or whatever the time was. Well, Paul, we, we hope it'll be going and I hope you'll be back next year with it. But, Paul, your charity work, one of the things I remember most about Paul Berry, besides being one of us, is his work as an auctioneer. I know you did a lot of them, Paul. And I would be there in the room with so many people. And I said, Paul's going to keep this going until he gets the money he wants. If we have to stay here for three hours, he's going to keep yelling at people. And he got the money. We got the money. Amazing, Paul. Yeah, we got the money. We, we, we got the More cash. than neediest kids. You did it for so many charities. Well, again, you know, I learned how to do it. I, did, I didn't. Nobody said come in and here. And you liked it. Auction. You enjoyed it. Yeah, it was great. You know, I always like to be center of attention. Give me a break. And there I was. You know, the auctioneer. No more center could you be than that guy, you know. That's and Paul so, Barry. Yeah, and that was great. It was it was great. I, I, I enjoyed it. I did twenty five years. I gave up twenty five summers, or from January to June, is the time it took for us to put the charity together, to put the the golf tournament together. Oh, I know that. And it was busy, uh, busy, and busy. yeah, and so both at Channel Seven, uh, which I appreciated Tom Cookley starting it, and great then guy. over at Channel uh, over at the Booz Allen and Hamilton, Bill Stasier, um, you, you know, he was the was the person that said, "Come on down." Uh, and together, again, as I said, you always have a team of people. We made a difference. Great bunch we of people. We made a difference. And a ton of kids. A ton of kids. All I mean, you that. know. So that, that was that was great. I, I just enjoyed the opportunity to, to do that. It made me also feel like um, Washington 
I was a part of Washington, and hey, Washington was a part of my you life. Were you were a big part yeah, of it, yeah, still yeah, are. Yeah. And I'm going to be back right now with Paul Berry. This is our town, and we're going to talk about his career in radio and his <laughs> moving to the eastern shore. He left our town. Paul, I forgive you. Thank you so much, Andy. I appreciate it. Hi, Tony Sybil here to tell everybody about our wonderful restaurants at Washington Harbor. Tony and Joe's, the best seafood in the city. Nick's Riverside Grill, wonderful chops and steaks. Wonderful views of the Kennedy Center, Roosevelt Island, the Roslyn skyline. Spectacular. Two bars outside right on the water. Fabulous food. For dinner reservations, call 202-944-4545. It's really a great experience. We'll see you down at Tony and Joe's or Nick's Riverside Grill. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Talking to Paul Berry, and now I'm going to start talking to him, even though it's our town, the Eastern Shore, Paul. You're deeply involved in the Eastern Shore. I yeah, love it. My wife is a native of St. Michael's on the Eastern I Shore. I did not know She that. was a native. If you go into St. Michael's and you drive in, you'll see this beautiful furniture store called Higgins and Spencer. Uh, Uncle Alex was her her That's father's her brother. That's right. And if you go a little bit further, there's a grocery store called the Village Market. That was her father's store. And, and, wow. and she grew up there and her grandfather was John John Marshall who built uh, 50 or 60 of the main houses on the main street uh, and he had the first trucking company in there Easton? in St. Michaels. In all, St. Of Michael's. all of this oh in St. Michaels, yeah. So um but, but you don't live in St. Michaels now. No, we we've, met, we've always or we live in in uh, Royal Oak which is between Easton and St. Michaels. That's I know where Royal Oak. Yeah. Van Fossen used to have a farm there. Yeah, before he and they, if you're going to the Bellevue Royal Ferry, Oak, yeah. you go right through down to the Bellevue to take the ferry across from Bellevue uh, right. to over to Oxford. So you know that's that's very right often. in the center. And yeah, you it's love beautiful. the Eastern Shore, but we don't want you to leave our town. But I understand what you're doing, and you're a big part of the community down there. I did not mention, and I should the the awards among the many awards that Paul has won. He's <laughs> twice. He was and by the mayor as Paul Berry Day in the District of Columbia. Can you imagine that? That's incredible. Two times, huh? How about do, that? Do I know the mayors? Mayor Berry. <laughs> yeah. And, and then and then uh, um, what's her name? The first of the, the, the Sharon, first, Pratt? Sharon Pratt Dixon. Uh, on both of those mayors uh, decided that you know whatever we were doing at the time was worthy of great. of the recognition. It's great. It's really a very. I thought great Sharon name. was great. I yeah, thought she was Sharon was great. great. Uh, Marion was a great. Well, if I, you I ask like any bus- ask any businessman who they who they would love to be a mayor, they'll tell you right away. Marion understood business in so many different ways. He understood people. Now he that also had his right. he also had his problems, and and we recognize that. But human being, he's a human being. He was a human being. But we never did anything at WML in a public eye as a remote. That we'd invite a married, and he'd show up inevitably. He'd be on the air with the guys, and he'd talk. I mean, he we had a charity softball game. Who came, mayor? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the kind of guy. He's Marion. another guy that really he loved this town. He, he loved, loved the town. it. This he was his. This, this was town. his town and our town. Yeah, and I loved and I loved the city. And I, it was difficult to leave. I got to tell you, but because you when really I left, didn't leave. You just well, spread what out I mean is bit. to move. I, I moved uh, in 1999 to Easton. Once I left at Channel Seven after 30 some odd years. Right. Um, and uh, my wife was selling real estate. Uh, Amy was; she knew the area, and asked if I would get my license and help her, so that when she talked about curb appeal, I'd have an idea what the heck that well, was. Okay, <laughs> I get it, <laughs> I get it. And so I do; I help her. But she's uh, she she lists out properties. Uh, she's with the Meredith Fine Properties, uh, which is uh, in she's in Easton. So and if anybody wants to sell their house or buy a house, uh, she she'd be pleased to help you. Call Paul Berry. Well, the nice part of it with me is is that she can. <laughs> introduce you to me <laughs> she knows me very well this woman yeah your man needs no yeah. introduction yeah. now we went to a celebration of yours janice we went to his celebration at the mayflower hotel oh was, wow was that a guys. birthday for you yeah it was my 50th birthday was your yeah. dad there he was that's where i remember that's that right. my dad was that there was a, colleen evans colleen, the everybody was there it was a wonderful a it was a party. fabulous evening and i think the the drifters or the platters or we had groups there we had folks there it was a wonderful turnout, and again, you know that was. And just, your kids were there. I yeah, remember that. yeah. They were let's young. see. Yeah, they everybody. I was a lot, let's see fifty. Uh, the baby who hadn't been born yet, I don't think. Uh, I was, don't remember, but I know your children yeah, but were there. Yeah, two of the two oldest were there. Amy, yeah. of course. Yeah, and it was great fun. That was it the was community turnout for you. Yeah, 
Yeah, we raised uh, we raised I think at the day ninety thousand bucks. That went. <laughs> that's what it was about. When, yeah, I, was like, I didn't get that ninety thousand, but 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 people that needed it got it, and uh, that was the beauty of it. Paul, that's what, yeah. Where was the benefit we went to with Paul, and he left his tuxedo, and we had to borrow a coat for him oh, or where jacket from a waiter. Yeah, we had, and we did. I, <laughs> I know that, but it worked. I was, I was on the Bay Bridge when I realized I didn't have my jacket coming across for some event. Oh, you know what it was? Leukemia. It was a leukemia. That was one. Was, was it leukemia? I was remember I used to MC and do the absolutely and, and and do the auction, and that was the leukemia ball, and I couldn't get back across to get my jacket, so we borrowed a, a, one of the waiters. <laughs> nobody knew. Got him dressed up. <laughs> nobody but you were ready. Nobody knew. But nobody you knew. carried it off, and you did so much and so many great things. And well, we can't thank you enough. Paul. You know what? Well, thank you, and I appreciate that. But I, I I hope the folks are hearing what I'm hearing is that every time I talk about something that I've done that was good, guess who was there? Andy Augershausen oh. and Janet. Where every time there, I'd look up and you guys were just so oh. supportive. I appreciate that. I really do. It well, was we didn't help you with your radio show. Now that's your latest venture. Yeah, and I'm so excited about that because that's a great, great thing for you to do. It's a. I feel like, but I got to tell you, I feel like I'm cheating. You know why? Because I've been used to television for so long, which is dual medium, right? And I get there in a the radio show. I mean, I remember when I first started doing a radio show. Andy, I would show up every day like I was going to be on television. And finally, <laughs> finally, the engineer, after about uh, the, I guess, uh, maybe eighth or tenth show, he says, you know, Mr. Barry, can I tell you something? I said, yes, nobody can see you but me. He says, <laughs> and I don't care what you're wearing. He, I said, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I don't have, but, you know, and, and I love it because you can create pictures and images through radio. And I've always loved radio. Um, and so I have two shows. On the first uh, show uh, weekly is called... Um, um, uh, uh, Streetwise. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the two. Streetwise airs every Sunday at 11 o'clock on uh, WWRC uh, 1260. And then at 3 o'clock, nationwide and worldwide, uh, Home and Family Finance uh, airs at 3 o'clock on the same. So I have two shows on Sundays. Both uh, on the on, same station, locally? Bo- both, yeah, bo- both, pro- both on the same show, carried by the same show. Right. Uh, b- but produced in different places. Right. Um, and, and it's great. One is about sp- just uh, the home and family finance is exactly that. Our kitchen table issues that we all face. And so we ask, we ask the question, are you financially fit? And we talk about what that means. And then today I had a great show on him with one of the people, John Smoltz, who, who, who's a great pitcher, great Atlanta pitcher, Braves. Hall of Famers. Yeah. Hall of Famers. And they're talking about the kind of things that we talk about. And it's related to budget. You know, these kids are pitching their arms out at nine. They're doing John, uh, Johnny, what do they call it? The Johnny uh, uh, what, surgery. Uh, yeah. The, the, uh, John, yeah. That's the second name. Yeah. John yeah, is yeah the... something. For, they're doing on surgeries on these kids at uh, 11, 12, 13 years old. They pitch their arms out, or have to be careful. So okay. we had a, we had one of the doctors, and we had him on. But that's the kind of things we talk about, and that can affect the family budget. If you got to take care of your kids, wow. and, you know, and starting then, so we talk about that. And then the real estate show, which is Streetwise, is all about real estate, uh, which is happening locally. Uh, we talk to developers, we talk to bankers, wow. we we talk to brokers, uh, we talk to people that have an impact on on real estate, and it's really interesting. These are people that are responsible for the way the the books the, the buildings look or the schools. Uh, so it's it's it, it's exciting. Both shows are exciting, and I'm pleased to do them. Well, that sounds like a WMAL effort that we used to do. We used to try to help a lot of people. Remember, one time we were the only station. We had a shrink on the air. We had Larry Krebs working all night. Nobody else had anybody. And we had Ken Beatrice. Oh, so God. we were a little bit. And people would say, there's something wrong with your company. There's something wrong with your station. He said, it's all over the lot. And I said, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. what we are. Well, you we're served everybody. You served everybody. I mean, remember Felix Grant at night <laughs> when he was on with Bossa Nova when he came on? You remember there? And Felix we, brought, we, and, and they went to that trip with Tommy. Gwaltney and they brought yeah. back the uh, the bossa nova. Yeah, right. There's that's a new right. sound. Yeah, we right. got to adopt it. It's great stuff. That was it was us. Yeah, it was. It was that was you too. Harden and Weaver right? there in the mornings. I mean, we just went through so many great, fun, fun people, and we just lost our nighttime guy. I went to his uh, to his funeral. Who was on at night? Um, that Bill Mayhew. Bill Mayhew. You remember Bill Mayhew? He did the shows at. Uh, Mayhew yeah, yeah. Bill Mayhew died. Uh, um, Cheapers. Did not know that, Paul. You're yeah. telling us something we don't know. Well, maybe, maybe it was Shirley. Was it Shirley? He Shirley died. That's I'm what sorry. It, Shirley forgive died. Forgive me. Forgive me. It was. Yeah. That's what old age do to you. Okay. You know. I <laughs> was. At the, uh, yeah. I, I was at the funeral. I know. If somebody died. They may you. All right. <laughs> 
said if he didn't die, they'd be buried, yeah, they'd the, wrong. buried the wrong person. Shirley said. was a big part of WML, yeah, too. Yeah, Paul, yeah. I can't thank you enough. I'm so excited to get this word out that you're going to be on the pod and people could turn in to find out about Paul Berry, things they didn't know before. And that's why we're doing our Eddie, town. this is great. You know what? You 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 go on forever. And it's such what a great, you know, we I celebrated your, what was it? Your 80th? 80th birthday. And everybody's like, oh, thank for what you've done. I was like, yeah, right. He ain't going anywhere. This guy's going to be around for a long, long time. And That's here you are. Them. Uh, that was seven years ago. Just keep Paul. fooling us. Just keep Paul, fooling thank us. Thank you Andy. so much. Thank you. Give our love to Amy and I Janice, will. and I love that. We hope we see you both at this special party. We'll be there. We'll at be there. The Tony and we'll, Joe. We look forward to it. And we're paying for it. You don't have to pay for this. You mean I, I'm going to get a drink on you for free? <laughs> we'll make sure you get paid, Paul. Wow. <laughs> this is our town. Stop the presses. Andy Ocker's house, and thanks for listening. You've been listening to Our Town Season One with your host Andy Ockershausen. New Our Town podcast episodes are released each Tuesday and Thursday. We welcome your comments and suggestions on how you like the show or who you'd like to hear from next. Catch us on Facebook at Our Town DC or visit our website at OurTownDC.com. Our special thanks to WMAL Radio in Washington, D.C. for hosting our podcasts.